I will introduce a wide range of listening activities, starting with very simple ones and gradually making them more complex. There should be something for everybody. Simple actions. The children can perform simple actions while listening to a story, dialogue, or song. When they hear certain words or phrases, they can touch cards in front of them, or move and touch cards. They can stand up, they can clap, or shout out, or perform some other action. They can all listen for the same words, or each child or team can have different words to listen out for. Each child could have cards and could hold them up when she hears the word for that card. They can listen for words from certain phonics families or from categories. For example, one team could be listening for animals and shout out animal whenever they hear one, and another team could be listening for fruit. They can listen for colours, and when they hear red, they need to touch something red. Or they could be listening for adjectives, and when they hear the word big, they can touch something big, or shout out something big. Put in order. The children can have pictures or words that are in the listening material. Before listening, they can guess what order they will be in, and correct the order while listening. Alternatively, putting words and pictures in order can be a memory game. You or one of the children can quickly say a list of words. The children then race to get words or pictures and try to put them in the same order. Touch words or pictures. Cards are spread out on a table or floor or stuck to the board, and either you or one of the children calls out a letter, word, or sentence, and the children try to slam or touch the correct word or picture. I discuss this game in detail in the Phonics Games 1 video. Make shapes. The children listen and make shapes with their hands or bodies while listening. For example, they can listen to the alphabet and make shapes of the letters, or listen to a story and make shapes of words from certain categories, such as animals, or words they are listening out for. How many? After listening to a story or song, ask the children a question like, How many animals? And the children try and remember all the animals they heard in the story or song and count them. Picture dictation. You can describe a picture, and the children can try and draw it. The children can then take turns to describe pictures to other children. They can do this in pairs, in groups, or as a whole class. They can describe pictures that you give them, pictures they choose, or they can first draw the pictures they are going to describe. Alternatively, they can describe something that is familiar to them for the other children to draw, such as their home, their room, or their neighborhood. Drawing there are other listening activities that involve drawing. A simple one is for you or one of the children to direct the other children to draw something related to a particular language target. For example, if the language target is adjectives, you can say, draw a long dog, or draw a happy horse. Another kind of drawing activity is where the children draw pictures before or after listening to a story or song. If it is before the activity, you can tell the theme of the story or song. For example, the park. The children draw a picture, and when appropriate, may draw things that they guess may be in the story or song. If it is after listening, they can either draw a general picture of their impression of the story or song, or draw the things they remember hearing. Maps You or the children can give directions, and the children draw the directions on a blank sheet of paper. I usually start by saying things like, open the door, 
and often end up with some place far away. The activity can even work for places in other cities or in other countries, which includes getting to an airport. The children draw every stage. Another way to use maps is for all the children to have the same map. It could be a real map or just a fun imaginary map, and it is best if it contains quite a lot of names of streets, buildings, or landmarks. You or one of the children give directions, which the children follow on their maps. Don't say where you are going in advance. The aim is for the children to discover the destination. Treasure map. Each child draws a treasure island map, and then draws a grid on the map. They write letters down the left side of the map and numbers across the top, or vice versa. Either you or one of the children dictate words, and each child chooses where to write them in the grid. I have three boxes or bags, one with the letters from the grid, one with the numbers, and one with the words that were dictated. I then call out something like gold or silver, and a child draws one item from each box. If any child has the word in the correct square, they get an appropriate number of points. It is best to draw a few times to give more children a chance to find gold. They then do the same for the other positive and negative things they may discover on the treasure island, such as diamonds, sharks, or monsters, and each is worth different positive or negative points. Crafts. Either you or one of the children gives instructions on how to make something, and the children make it. For example, the children could make origami, make animals, make a house, make puppets, make Christmas cards, make a weather chart. There are many possibilities. Bingo. Playing bingo with you or a child calling out words or numbers is an effective listening activity. As I mentioned in the previous video. The children can play bingo while they are listening to a song, story, or dialogue, and circle words as they hear them. They can make their own bingo cards before the listening activity, and guess what words they are going to hear. Or you can dictate words, and they can choose which squares to write them in. I will introduce more listening games in the next video.